So my name is Aaron Priest. Um, I am visually impaired. I've been so since birth. Um, I've been playing video games since like two or three years old. Um, now, as I've gotten older, I've lost vision. So I primarily played video games when I was younger, and I primarily play audio games and some video games. Some interference here going on. Cell phone, I think. Um, so I've been I've been playing video games for a long time, and these audio games um, more recently. And basically, an audio game is essentially a video game without any visuals. So it's all all the information you need to play the game is presented through audio. What I want to demonstrate today is so there are many audio games available in different genres, and they essentially are the equivalent of a video game. But like I said, it's all in audio. Um, so oftentimes these are made by like a single person. They come up with an idea of how would I, if how would I render what would normally be rendered in graphics in audio, and they they come up with something really clever, and then it's you know they release it to the audio games community and, and people play it, but it's not really ever dis, uh, the information is not disseminated out into the public of how you would make these kinds of games accessible for like a mainstream game. It's all just kind of kept in the community because one it's just one one person teams most of the time. So what I wanted to do is demonstrate several of these games and today I wanted to focus on um, first person games or like 3D audio games. In the, in the past I've focused mainly on 2D games um, so I wanted to focus on like a first person perspective today. So I've got three games, uh, three first person games to show you um, and I've, what I've done is I've since 90% of the time when you play an audio game you really need to play with headphones. Um, to get the full experience because if something's off to my left, it's often my left speaker. Oops, headphones out. And if it's in the right, it's in the right speaker. So I, the headphones really help with uh, audio positioning. So what I've done is I've recorded myself um, playing many of these games. I don't know what's going on with the speaker. Okay, some. I don't know what's fixing that, but okay. So I've recorded myself playing some of these games, and I do have them here on the computer too. Um, but so what I can do is when I'm I'll pause and re pause and stop the the recording since it'll be all kinds of noise and loudness. So I, I want to be able to pause it to explain to you what's happening in the game and why why, why these sounds are playing and what they're indicating. Um, first, so just in general, as a visually impaired person, um, just to access a computer or any kind of like digital technology, I use something called a screen reader. So when you hear this, um, that is my screen reader talking, and, and the, I changed the voice on the, um, the videos themselves, so it's a lot easier to understand. Um, but this, anything I want on the computer screen can be read out to me, and I just navigate with the keyboard, and I can also simulate mouse movement with the, uh, with the keyboard if I need to. Um, so any, any, and this is on compu any kind of computer, any kind of digital technology nowadays will have this built in. So. Um, even uh, Mac and Windows computers, uh, Linux computers all have it built in. Um, Android and I, I, iOS smartphones have a built in screen reader as well. Um, app, any kind of like streaming media devices, so your Nvidia Shields and Apple TVs and Fire Sticks and things like that, they all have a screen reader built in nowadays. Um, and then again, it's just going to anything I either, what, basically whatever's highlighted is what's going to be read. And then if I want to, I can gain information about other parts of the screen. Um, so the first game I want to show you is called Swamp, and it is a um, zombie survival MMO first-person shooter. Um, so you've got it's online only essentially. Um, you've got stats that you can raise, and but it's mainly a FPS where you're just running around killing zombies. Um, so and it does a lot of interesting things with. Audio in one and just the way it presents the information to you and the, the, the navigation options and things like that, but also it let it allows you to customize your sound. So like what, in my game, I have you you can lower or raise any volume you want in the game for any sound in the game. So I've lowered all the uh, like the weapon sounds in mine, so I can actually hear the the bullets hitting and things like that. Um, so I will open this up, and then you see um, this will not have graphics. There'll be um, like a logo, and then there actually is graphics with this, but they are rudimentary, um, and they're really some people with low vision use them. I've I've, I've recorded it, so if people want to see it, they can um, how it works with with graphics. But it, it almost to me when I when I play it like that, it um, 
confuses me because mentally I'm picturing it in a first person perspective, but the graphics themselves are a 2D, it's like an overview of the map essentially. Um, so they're from a top down perspective, which kind of throws me off a little bit, but I've, I've got that recording too if you want to see that. Okay, so I will launch. Checked. So this is the sound. Sound. Okay. So right. So it was saying south. Um, so the that means that I just turn south essentially. Um, I can so I, I can move with my mouse um, in like just turning general just generic turning with a mouse. But also, and this is something I don't know that you see this in mainstream games necessarily, but uh, in most first person games for people that are visually impaired, you will have the option to be able to snap to compass directions. So I can turn you know, south, southwest, things like that. Um, and that helps me orient myself and make sure I'm going essentially like in a straight line um, to, to pinpoint like doors or, or to navigate, navigate in general, just to know, know I'm, I'm heading in the direction I think I'm heading. Um, and I can also check that on the fly, um, what direction I'm facing. Um, so I'm going to hit play. So you'll hear me running, and then you'll hear zombies running, and the, the footsteps are the same. Um, mine are a lot faster, um, and I, that's another thing. Like I, inside the game, I changed the zombies' footsteps to be a little louder, and I changed my footsteps to be a little quieter, so they wouldn't. I wouldn't accidentally run into one without realizing because the footsteps are the same. So here we go. S W West. So we're heading west. Okay, there's a zombie. So he's walking towards me. So I'm, shooting, so I'm shooting at him with my shotgun, and, and he, something else. Something else. You, you, heard he, you heard footsteps coming at me, coming at me and, that was, and that, was that was a zombie walking towards me. I was trying to shoot it, but very, very, very recently, recently, the developer of this game has set things so that the zombies sink across. He's running it from like one server in his house or something. So the in the past, to make sure that nobody had like tons of lag, the zombies didn't necessarily sync up between players um, to make it. But now he's trying that out, and so I've noticed, especially when I'm near other players, and you'll hear, and I'll, I'll try to pay attention and, and tell you when it shows up, but you'll hear a ping for other players. I've actually muted their footsteps, so I didn't think they were zombies. I, I just hear their ping whenever they're walking around. Um, but that means that zombies, when they like tries to autocorrect between me and some other player, zombies tend to have a, a tendency to teleport on me, um, and then I have to hunt them down again. Um, so. W West. So I'm winging other players. Okay, there I turned it on because I knew I had a feeling. So there's a dog. That faster footsteps. Oh, got him. And you could hear him fall to the ground. And because the dog because the dog's low to the ground, the fall sound is a little quieter and quicker because they're already on all fours. And West. So that's this like that stump that that's just grass, and you'll hear. You know, uh, concrete here in a minute, you'll hear water, there's different surfaces um, that you'll be walking on. And that also plays into like when a zombie falls and when you fall and things like that. It, it plays a sound based on what kind of surface you're walking on. No data for your current location. Okay, so that's something too. I just check, I can, so like on a, on a, on a video game, you will probably have some sort of HUD that has all your health, your experience, all that kind of stuff, maybe like a little mini map. Um, for an audio game, most of the time, I just have hotkeys that let me request information about my character and my position. So I just I'm tired already. That's, that's the main way of I'm just at the middle of the Shells for your Benelli and double, and double your north. 
Scattershot, Scattershot, and Duck West. And Duck West. And something that probably doesn't, I've faced the speakers, the speakers towards, towards you, so hopefully you get a little bit of it, but all of this is panning, so like that zombie I just shot, he was like, that he was like off, off to my left or right or something, and I turned the mouse to center the footsteps and the growling in my ears, and then I know that he's centered, and I'm using a shotgun so I can be a little less direct compared to like a sniper rifle or something, um, since it has a wider bullet spread, but that's, basically you want to center the... He, he's done his best, he's done his to, best make to make all the sounds make sense because you're you're getting all this information through audio that you don't really visually, but you're trying to make it, try to make, it um, um, make sense make sense to in the context of the game. That's what you're hearing though. Anything you want to That'll work. I'll be. I'll probably be downstairs interviewing all the exhibitors like I did last year. Okay. Jackson Street has double quest and double quest has double. Do you the fly? Do you 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 fly? There's like a blank space, space over there that I could actually move through on the far right. That last sound just now. That last that sound just now. Like that tells. That's like a blank space okay. item. So one thing. Two so one is thing. Volume. Two is volume. Um, um, and I'll. 
Jump, jump forward again. quickly forward again. I want to make sure I get to this. 11 tenths. We've got some. And I'm actually using mouse. And I'm actually using mouse. Like to tell the time in VLC, I'm actually using mouse navigation. Like I'm, I'm simulating like I'm scrolling the mouse around to find this. Okay. So I was shooting at something, and now I've got a sledgehammer. So there's the guns have different ranges, so it uses volume to tell me how close the zombies are, essentially, which would make sense. Um, but you kind of have to tailor. You kind of have to tailor. You have to learn the distances because audio. It does. You know, you can show a lot of things equivalently to a to a visual game and audio, but audio as just as a medium is not as precise, especially from in volume um, to. Ought to, ought to so, like, visual. So, like, if, if, if running this towards zombie's running, running towards you and you're trying to hit it, if you're looking at it, you'd be able to see when it's close enough to hit. I kind of have to guess based, based on the volume, and, and also based on what I've set the volume to of his so footsteps. So, you'll hear me swing a couple times until I get. So, here he's coming right at me. Okay, got it. More coming at me. Getting closer. They they know when you get a, a melee weapon out. They run you if you're if you're using guns or whatever. They charge. They'll try to get up close to you. But as soon as you pull out the melee weapon, they start circling you. They don't want to get. And you're you're waiting for it to come at you, and then they just they start circling around you because they know that if they hit range, they'll hit you. They'll, you'll get them. There he goes. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's, a, that's a pretty solid. Um, okay, so, um, okay, so one more in this game. I want to show you the radar. Two things. The radar I talked, about, things. Earlier, radar I talked about earlier that we already kind of saw and also, going across. And there, there are also, buildings like, in this game. So there like are buildings in this game, so like I'm at a Kmart or Kmart or whatever um, he calls it. Um, and so it's, so it's, it's laid out like a store would be laid out. So there's shelves everywhere and all this kind of stuff. There's different rooms, um, storage rooms, kitchens, all that kind of thing. Um, anything that would be in an actual store. So navigation wise, if you're navigation wise, if you're if you can't see any of that, you one you can memorize it, and also uh, but also he has something called it called a building helper called a building helper, which will help you know if you're going deeper into a building or headed towards the exit of a building, and that's particularly helpful if you're being swarmed by zombies in a building and you're dying, you need to get out and go heal or something. I'm going to um so I'm going to fast forward here. A lot of it's just walking and killing. A lot of it's just walking and killing zombies until, and getting until items, and until, until I get to the part where I can actually show you things. Okay. Okay. Something else. You hear a high pitched beeping right now. That's actually a beacon. So that's actually a beacon. So I can set a beacon on any building in this map. And it will tell um, me the distance, to it, the the distance, distance to it and what direction. direction. It doesn't direction give you like exact directions. We'll see something complete more game. complete um, in the next this game. Tells me um, but this tells me is, where the building is, and it beeps constant high-pitched beep. Slower when I'm further away. Slower when I'm further, slower away, when I'm slower when I'm further as away. Closer as I get close to the right entrance, and it's kind of centered right in the center um, of the doorway. Um, and I can get a, it moves in my panning left to right in my stereo field, so I know if I'm if it's like. Off to my left or right, and things like that. And I can also check. Like I can. And I can also check. Like I can check where if I press a key, it will tell me you know this much distance. Go northeast 215 tiles. Northeast 215 tiles or something like that. Go east 27. Go east 27 tiles. There's a dog using a suppressor. So just not really an accessibility thing. Just not really an accessibility thing, but I. Zombies um, track you by sound. So zombies track you by sound, so a lot of the guns are really loud, damage, especially the so ones that do a lot of damage. Right so I've got a suppressor I'm right now, so I don't keep trying to show something, and these zombies keep coming after me, so I have to change weapons. 11.15. Okay. Oh. Another one of those, and they can deflect bullet, bullets. And north. And north. Okay, so I, that it's, it's hard to tell with the speaker. Uh, but, that stereo. Is, uh, actually, using but that is uh, actually I'm using the one to my left, so I know when I um, like when I'm 
come in, like when I I'm, hear that sound right now, I hear that sound right now means there's all kinds of open space, space to my left, so I can know. Oh, I'm in the doorway. I can turn and go into uh, the building. I explain just. Um, I explain just I'm since gonna, we're going low on time. I'm gonna switch to the next game. But the building helper basically plays one sound as you're going deeper in, as you take a foot every single time you take a step, and then plays a different sound every time you take a step towards the exit. And that it's pretty intelligent. Like if I'm walking towards the exit and I kind of go off to the side of a, if I go like to hunt down an item or something off to the side of the entrance, it'll actually pick up, oh, you're not going towards the entrance anymore. So I wanted to show this last year, but the game did not come out until December. This was a very highly anticipated, this is basically a traditional fantasy role-playing game. So to me, it reminds me of like a D&D campaign, essentially. So you're in a town, and there's bad bad things coming from different directions of the town, and you're trying to figure out why why all this, you know, goblins are attacking. And um, zombies are coming in, or undead are coming in, and all this So this is actually this. I've so this is actually this. I've completed the game, completed the game. Completed the game. Completed the game. Completed the on this file. So this is a uh, kind of lots of post game. game. Lots of. I think I have like two quests left to do, but. Um, Entering North South Road. Entering North South Road. Okay, so I'm in. This is. It's a turn based role playing game, but it, it, navigation is in three three dimensions. Or, or three, three, like three per, uh, first person view. Um, so instead navigation. of doing the radar, like so the instead game, of doing the radar like the other game did, this sound, has there's different sounds. The sound that play there's different sounds that play right to your left, right, and ahead of you, what depending is, on what is, what is in your viewer, like what has changed so right around you. Loaded, so, so right now I just loaded, so it popped like, oh, you're in a new spot. It told me there was a little beep sound, and that told us. It's hard to describe these different beeps, but that that particular beep told me there is a either something I can interact with. So off to my person, left. Uh, so either a person, can, uh, something I can loot, like a box or something. You know, um, box or something. In this case, it's a person. Um, and that, in this um, case, it's it, a person. It, it, um, but it, it, I can actually, it tells me a sound. And I can actually I can use arrow keys to just like I can use arrow keys to just like spin around as much as I want, yeah. like turn. Um, general, general, just general, manual turning. General, just manual turning. But I can snap to compass directions, and I can also snap to items. Um, so if I hear something off to my left, I can press a key and left or right, and it'll cycle between, basically swing my character around until he's facing a particular item or box. And then, well, here's some, I'll try to explain it as it says it, but there's um, a lot of a lot of talking um, as I'm moving around, because it's con it basically, this, this gives me more of, Someone Basically, whatever someone was, that was playing this visually would audio, see, so it's telling me an audio. Start, so if I start, I'm going to start walking down the. Road. I'm on the south of the city, and I'm walking north. And right, then there's going to be a door off to my right, and I'll turn to face so. it, and you'll hear. So. We'll start walking. We'll start walking. So all kinds of like up interactable okay, things. Okay, that just now I walked forward the, several the steps. Wider the me, kind of quieter beep was direction. telling me, oh, there's a wall to this direction so there's now. There's not an open space. And there's a separate sound um, from so open space. Like um, so now there was like a crunching kind of, uh, uh, it's hard to describe. Uh, Basically, this uh, um, sound that just played. In addition to, um, the, door sound, in addition to the door sound. Like it's a, it's kind of overlapped because there's an empty space so plus a door. So the door has a very distinct sound. And I'm going to, my character's going to turn here and you'll hear it again. And of north sound. And of north sound. So it just, it's a very quick kind of deeper sound. Sharper, dark, uh, deeper sound. And that tells me there's a door. And then, um, let me just rewind for just a second. And of north south road two. And of north south road two. Tavern door four. My character so that tells me my character's look. So my view has, looking, changed, so and my view has changed. changed, and what's so in front of me has road, changed. So I'm on the road. The road, the road ends. ends. It tells me end of two, North South Road is two, so that's, uh, so that's two tiles away. Uh, tavern room door four. So that's four tiles away. And I can actually request that kind of information off on on um, just uh, on demand. Um, very helpful when you're you see you might and we'll see this later, but you'll see an item and it'll be behind a fence or something. And you that information. It's it's good to hear that information to know that oh, there's an item over there, but you have to find another way to get to it because it's like someone else looking over the fence and seeing it. Leaving north south. Leaving north south. So those those ascending pitches are telling me I'm about to run into a wall, um, and those will play anytime I'm getting really close to a wall. But also apparently close to a door. Entering tavern. Entering tavern. 
So there are people in this tavern. People tend, unless they're walking, most people are going to just chatter. Um, so that helps you. They, it'll play a sound for them, but it also helps you pinpoint people if you need to go talk to them. And they just kind of say things associated with whoever they are. Susan one. Susan one. Cooking pot three. That sound. So, that sound. That sort of swing. That tells me there. There's an item I can steal stuff from. Um, so I'm going to steal whatever's in this what pot. What will you take? Make what will you take? One, one. Bake potato one, one of one. Empty shelves two. Empty shelves two. So there's empty shelves. Shelves three. Okay, then I'm at these shelves. I'm going to take whatever in the shelves. And item in this game in particular, so items scale with your I'm character. Like so I'm like level so 60 or something. And <laughs> so normally on a random shelf in the end, there's going to be like crazy enchantments um, and stuff like that. What will you take? Like what will you take? Water of light two of two. Water of light two of two. Ring of the north Taken. wind one of one. Ring of the north wind one of one. Wait. Effortless. Wait. Value. Effortless. 100 value. 146. 146. 40% bonus ice damage. 40% bonus ice damage. Resist 36% of ice damage. And so I'm pressing num. Will tell me uh, like numbers earlier, will tell me different. Like basically, like uh, I said earlier with the other game, like um, something that, that might be like if you clicked on that and it showed it up on a screen, and then there'd probably be a little description with all that data there. I can request whatever data about an item I want with a number row. Um, so I just kind of went across um, looking at the the stats of this particular. Does not restrict magic. Does not restrict magic. It's already 1122. I'm going to fast forward to. There's something in this called a. There's beacons in this game too, but they are. It, it actually guides you step by step to whatever the beacon is on, and you can get them. They're either on your map already, and what's kind of cool is like. If you go to a library and you, you're about to go into the forest or whatever, and if you read a map about landmarks in the forest, it puts those on your map, and you don't have to you know, navigate through all the trees and try to find it on your own and run in circles. Um, so, let's see, where's that? So, General Store, General Store, Three in his Manor, North Gate, Three in his Manor, Set Barracks. Guard barracks. Fountain 1520. Okay. Fountain 1520. Fountain 1520. North, 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 south road. So you hear that guy yelling north. So that guy's yelling when north. north east, so south west, when I turn northeast, north, south, south and west, it says it in a British accent, and then whatever this is going to keep saying north, north, north until until it starts like turning east. If I need to turn down this east road to go to the the place I'm going to, it will. It'll start kind of it will, slowly moving off. It'll to my start right, kind of slowly moving off to my right because that direction needs to change east. pretty soon. And then it'll, it'll start saying north, east. If, right. if I'm still facing north, it'll be out of my right. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward. This is in East Gate Gate 27. Entering East West Road. End of East. End of East. End of East. End of East West Road 1. So it's going to keep telling me that until I get to my location. Um. I want to show you a fight here. So you just heard all my people. I just it, it's like random encounters uh, pop up, and then it's also set it set on the map wherever you're standing. Um, so you heard all the characters there. You heard all the characters there. What's interesting about this game, I think, is that fights are in 3D, essentially 3D audio. Um, so your position is sort of behind your three, three people, people and then they're facing the other people across um, so the actually, field or whatever. Fight, you um, so you actually, when you fight, you actually hear all your characters draw their the particular weapons, and it depends. The sound depends so on what kind of weapon they're using. Here. So we are fighting some vampires You have encountered here. three enemies. You have encountered three enemies. Choose, Choose a skill for Lucan. Flurry. Finesse. Warrior's Strike. Warrior's Strike. Use Prickle Hunt. Use Triple Hunt. Vampire. Vampire Ancient Lord. Vampire. Vampire, vampire Lord. Lord. At vampire Lord. At full health. Ancient Vampire. At full health. Ancient Vampire. At full health. And that's all in 3D. So like when, I, when I'm cycling through the enemies, it actually moves from like left to right in the audio field, wherever they're at. Vampire's actually features are more. Vampire's features are more. Yeah, so should we go ahead and stop? I guess we're getting close. Yeah, should we go ahead and stop? I guess we're getting close.
I found them in 2004, and I think, did you, I, there's, a, there's a website called audiogames.net, and that nowadays that's pretty much the main hub for any kind of accessible games, um, whether they're mainstream games that are accessible or audio games primarily, um, and that's where I go, there's, actually, there's like a new releases room there, and that's, that's where I go. I think somebody either told me about them, or some, somehow the information got communicated to me in the early 2000s, and I kind of just stumbled around until I found audio games and found the directory there. Um, but they were a lot fewer at that at that point in time um, than there are now. Uh, do you make audio games? I do not. I am not the developer. I, I might, if I can get around, get off my butt and learn programming at some point, I might, but not, not at this point. Yeah, I do actually write, I do game reviews. We have a, uh, I work for the American Foundation for the Blind, and um, we have a technology magazine that we publish monthly, and I've done a couple of audio game reviews for that, in, cool. a, in addition to other technology. So did you just, like, learn to listen to, like, the sound really fast whenever you're, like, the screen readers? Yeah, you just get used to it over time. And the same thing's true, with, so that the... Like the voice I've got on now for the for the for the recordings, I probably would have a little bit of, take a little bit of time before I could li listen to that quickly, just because of the way the cadence is. But I've been using the voice that I that you hear whenever I'm arrowing through files and stuff. I've been using that for like twenty, not twenty years, but close to it um, at this point. Same thing is true with the audio itself. Once you get used to audio games, you kind of I mentally where I've had I still have some vision, but um, I mentally visualize a lot of what's going on in these games and I I've noticed if I like try to like lean back or something and not actually look at like I'm looking at a screen I get worse at the game because um, I'm mentally mapping all the audio cues I'm getting to visual in my head when I play yeah so what's your favorite game uh, probably this um, hero's call um, the, the, what I've been showing now, um, Swamp, I just started back in, finally got a mouse that I could play it with uh, more recently, so I got back into that. Um, those are the main ones right now. There was a sort of a remake of a uh, Pokemon game, um, sort of different but kind of same RPG kind of style, but any, any kind of RPGs traditionally are my favorite kind of games. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.